In the last lecture, I talked about um, some basic facts about finding matchings in graphs, and in particular, um, I gave this theorem about um, when there exists uh, matchings in a bipartite graph, which I'll go over in just a moment. Um, this time what I'd like to do is give the most famous application of that, which is to the so-called marriage problem. So here's how the marriage problem goes. Suppose you have a village um, with um, some women and some men. Suppose that there are the same number of women as men in the village. And suppose that each woman knows, say, K men, and each man knows K women, where K is just some positive number. Then the theorem states that, there, that in this situation, there is always a way to find a perfect matching, that is, to find, to pair off um, each woman with exactly one man that she knows and each man with exactly one woman that she knows. Um, and so you can state this as a matching, uh, the existence of a perfect matching in a bipartite graph. I'll give that description in a moment. So. Um, so before I explain uh, the proof of that, um, of that nice little theorem, let me just recall what we did last time. So last time we showed that if you have a bipartite graph with bipartition x, y, so that means the graph is broken up into two pieces, one we're calling x, the other is y, so you have vertices here, vertices there, and the edges are only allowed um, to cross between these two sets, no internal edges within x or y. So in this situation, um, then, what we'd like to do is find a matching which saturates every vertex in X. That is, we'd like to find a collection of edges um, which are all, um, which don't bump into each other, um, disjoint edges, um, non-incident um, uh, um, edges, such that, um, such that for every vertex in X, there's an edge that, um, that hits it in our, in our set. And the, the statement was that there exists such a matching, which saturates every vertex in X, if and only if, if you look at every subset of X, and you look at the neighborhood of that subset, that is the vertices on the other side that are uh, matched to them by some edge of the graph, then the number of things um, in the neighborhood is at least as big as the number of things in the set. Okay, so last time we showed that this was equivalent to the existence of a matching that saturated X. So this time we'll talk about this uh, corollary, which is the marriage problem. Marriage problem, which says um, if G is a simple bipartite, K regular graph with K some positive number, then G admits a perfect pairing. A pairing in which every vertex is saturated by the match, a perfect matching, a matching where every vertex is saturated by some edge. Okay, so how does this work? Well, um, It works by making the, an observation about um, what the shape is of neighborhoods from one or the other partition. So we're going to imagine that our graph is broken up into two pieces, x and y. So we have a bipartition of the vertices. And so the observation is that um, if we define just for the sake of um, notation for the moment, E sub S, where let's say S is some subset of the vertices in the graph, we'll let E sub S be the set of edges incident to S, then um, if S is contained in one of the parts, then the number of edges that are, um, that are incident um, to vertices in S is exactly k times the number of vertices in S itself. Because each vertex, the graph being k regular, will contribute to k edges, and those edges are all um, distinct because they are passing through uh, different vertices on, on, on one of the parts, and, um, and because we're in a bipartite graph, that um, those, those edges are all distinct. Okay. 
So this is the first observation. And let's continue. So what we would like to show is that this puts us in the um, in the context of that of that theorem. So we're going to show that we have a, a pairing which saturates X. So how do we do that? Well, um, if S is a subset of X, then what we notice is that K times the number of vertices in there is the same as the number of edges that are incident to S. But actually, the edges that are incident to S are also going to be incident to the edges incident to um, vertices neighboring S. Uh, let's think about what that means. If I have a vertex X, let's say in one of my parts, then because the, this uh, degree K is positive, there's going to be some vertex, at least some other vertex Y, on the other side that X is adjacent to. Um, and, and, to, and if I have an if I have an edge which is adjacent to X, so if I have such an edge E, then notice that this edge is also adjacent to a vertex Y, which is in the neighborhood of X. Right, so this is what this inclusion signifies. It says that if E um, is uh, incident, excuse me, if, if E is incident to some X in S, well, then E is also incident to some Y in the neighborhood of, of, of S, in, uh, to something adjacent to X, namely, the other end of that edge. Okay. So this inclusion is simply this picture here. And so what that says is that the number of things here, well, is less than or equal to the number of things in here. But, of course, that's equal to um, k times the number of things in the neighborhood because, again, we're in a bipartite graph, and these are the things in the, uh, this is just a subset in the other part. If s was in the x, then the neighborhood of s is in y. Okay, so if you divide both sides by k, being some positive number, what that tells us is that the number of things in the neighborhood is at least as big as the number of things in the set. That puts us in the context of our previous theorem, and therefore there exists a pairing, a uh, matching, excuse me, which saturates x. Okay, well, we're almost done here. We have a, we have a pairing, uh, a matching that saturates x, we just need to show that it also um, saturates Y. Um, but um, that'll follow by just knowing that X and Y have the same size. If you think about it, what does is, what is this matching actually give us? So we have a matching which saturates X. That means for every point in X, for every vertex in X, we have some unique edge. And that edge really defines a function from X to Y. A function because it's everywhere defined now because it saturates X. So this really gives us a function from x to y. The fact that it's a matching tells us that that function is injective. That function is one one, because these um, because none of these um, because none of these edges bump into each other. None of these edges are adjacent. So so we get a uh, an injective function from x into y. And if we show that x and y have the same size, then such an injective function will be forced to be bijective which will then tell us that it's, in particular, surjective, that every y, every y and y is um, saturated by this matching. So we just have to show that the number of things in x is the same as the number of things in y, question mark, right? So, well, um, multiplying both sides by k makes this work very, very nicely because k times the number of things in x is exactly all of the edges that are incident to some vertex in x. This is a bipartite graph, so every edge there is has to bump into x somewhere. So therefore, this is just the no, this is just all the edges in, in the graph. But this is also the edges incident to some vertex in y, for the same reason as it was the other way, and therefore that's k times the number of things in y. Well, therefore, dividing by k being a positive number, we get in fact that the number of things in x is the number of things in y. Check. And therefore, this injective map is surjective, and therefore, we've saturated every vertex in Y, and we have a perfect matching as planned.